Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about functional form. Now, one thing I've talked about with ordinarily squares in the past is that one of the downsides of it is that it can only fit a straight line. And there's a lot of relationships that aren't straight, and so, you know, a straight line might not be what makes sense. But that's actually a bit of a lie. Uh, there are limits on the kinds of lines and shapes that ordinarily squares can fit, but it's actually not limited to just straight lines. And so for certain shapes of relationships and data, we can fit lines that correspond a little more accurately to the kind of relationship that we are trying to model. Uh, so let's take a quick example. So let's look at this data right here. So this data right here clearly has a bit of a curve to it. A straight line is not going to do a job. And in fact, if we put an ordinarily squares line onto it, we can see that it's not really following the data all that closely. Uh, so, you know, at the very left-hand side, you know, the points are all beneath the line. In the middle, they're all above the line. At the very right-hand side, they're all below the line. Again, we're, we're not predicting very well. We've got the general downward shape, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not good. Uh, but what we can do is we can fit a line that's a bit curvy. We can fit a curvy line, and we're going to fit a curvy line to this. And there are limits on the kinds of curvy lines, and technically what it needs to be is something called linear in parameters that I won't super go into. Uh, but as long as we're doing basic transformations of the x-axis variable, uh, we can still plot those things out. And so a certain kind of transformation we can do is, for example, uh, with a polynomial. A polynomial is when we just add squared terms, or cubed terms, or, cube, or quartic terms, and more and more. Um, uh, to, uh, to our regression. And each of those terms is going to get its own coefficient. So when I say linear in parameters, what I mean is that each of these parameters by themselves are just by themselves multiplied by a variable. Uh, there's not like beta squared, it's not like beta squared or two to the power of beta. Uh, it's just beta. Uh, and so we can add these terms. We can add x and x squared, and that will help us fit a parabolic line, a curvy line. We could add cube term. That will help us fit a cubic line. And when we do that, we can get a relationship like this. And now we are getting a curvy line out of our ordinary least squares regression uh, because we are adding a cubic or a, 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 a polynomial term, we're adding a squared term here. And that will help us map out this squared to relationship looking data, right? It's, it's parabolic. Uh, and so we're fitting that line. Uh, we can add higher order terms. You want to be careful as you add higher and higher order polynomials. You don't want to just add a whole bunch in there uh, because the more terms that you add, the sort of noisier the relationship can get. And you can get some really weird predictions uh, as well. And this other thing to note about these polynomials is that uh, if you go outside the range of the data, they tend to get really wild really quickly uh, and sort of zoom off into infinity uh, and get really big. So you want to make sure that if you're using polynomial terms, that you're really just looking at the data itself and not trying to go outside of the data in terms of predicting what's going to happen. So how do we interpret our regression if we have a polynomial term in it? Uh, well, we would interpret it in terms of a one unit increase, uh, which is a little bit more difficult to think about because we have a couple of variables going on. So uh, one easy way to think about it is as a derivative. Uh, so if you write out the equation for your regression and you take the derivative of it with respect to x, then the result that you get is the effect of a one unit increase in x. So if we have x plus x squared, we take the derivative, uh, beta one times x, derivative of that is just beta one, beta two times x squared, derivative of that is two times beta two times x. And this is the effect of a one unit increase in x. A couple things to note. One, it depends on both coefficients, both beta one and beta two. The individual coefficients by themselves mean very, very little when we have a polynomial term and you want to avoid trying to interpret them on their own. It doesn't particularly matter if they're significant or not. It doesn't particularly matter what their value is on their own. What does matter is when you put them together because that's going to give you the actual effect of x, not either one of those coefficients on their own. The other thing to notice is that the actual effect of x varies depending on what value of x you already have. The effect of x at a value of 1 is going to be one thing. The effect of x at a value of 10 is going to be an entirely different thing, which makes sense, right? This shape, the effect of a one unit change in x changes. Over here, at going one value over an x doesn't really change things much at all. Over here, going one value over an x changes things quite a bit. So that's actually what we want. We want the effect of x, the slope of the line, to change as we change values of x. So polynomial terms, if we have a curvy line or a curvy relationship, we can fit a curvy line to it using polynomial terms. Uh, you can add squared terms to add to get parabolic lines, cubic terms to get cubic lines. Uh, you don't want to go too high because things can get a little bit statistically uh, unsettled. Uh, but once we have it, we can interpret the effect of x by writing out the equation for our 
uh, regression and taking the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, the slope itself, the effect of a one unit change in x will be different depending on the values of x. Uh, we can do this in R, by the way, uh, by uh, simply adding in the terms and wrapping them in the i function. Uh, the i says to, hey, uh, I take this x squared and just put it in as an x squared term by itself. So if I want to do a quadratic term, I do instead of y uh, on x, as I would normally do, I would do y on x plus i of x squared. And that will add the x squared term to my regression. Uh, that's pretty much all you have to do to add the uh, polynomial term in R. Another common transformation that people do to fit non-straight lines is logarithms. This is very, very common in economics uh, it, because it helps uh, deal with data that is highly skewed. It also helps to deal with relationships that are exponential in some way. So for example, any sort of percent, anything that you might think of in terms of percentage growth, uh, that straight lines don't really fit percentage growth, right? Because what if you have something that grows at let's say 1% a year. Well, the first year, let's say if you start with 100, a 1% 1 of a year is gonna give you an additional one. Okay, but then the second year, it's gonna give you an additional 1.01. .01. And then the third year, it's gonna give you 1.02 uh, uh, or 1.03, right? So the actual additional change that you get for a constant percentage change is different. So it's not gonna be a straight line. So anything that to deal with percentage changes or exponential changes or growth, uh, it's probably going to have a logarithm applied to it. Additionally, any variable that is highly skewed, that has maybe a lot of values that are really small, and then a couple really, really huge values. So for example, income is highly skewed. There's a bunch of people with, let's say, making $40,000 a year in their household, and then there's a few people who make millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? So if you tried to fit a straight line with that data, these people over here would be driving things all crazy. Uh, and so you want, might want to take a logarithm to take those really high values and pull them in closer. Uh, so that the really high and out there skewed values don't mess up your whole thing. Here's an example of some data that follows a logarithmic pattern. Uh, so we have an exponential relationship, right? We have a really sharp increase down here at the bottom, and then it flattens out a whole lot. This is sort of the shape of a logarithmic line. Um, and so if we uh, fit a straight line to it, it's going to not do very well, but a logarithmic line is going to fit that very well. And this is the kind of relationship that you might see with things that can get highly, highly skewed, where you have some really out there values. Income I mentioned, wealth is another good one. Uh, citations of a paper or like sales of an album. Most albums don't sell very many copies, but some albums sell millions and millions and millions of copies, right? And that's gonna really, really uh, skew things out. And so anytime you have that, where most people are down here, some people are way, way, way over there, you probably want a logarithm in there at the very least. The other nice thing about logarithms is they have a very clean percentage change interpretation. Uh, a one unit change in the log of something is roughly equivalent to a percentage change in the actual thing itself. Uh, and so we can walk through the logic of what it means for a logarithm to change in percentage terms. So let's say we are talking about a one unit change in the logarithm of x. That is equivalent to a 100% change in x itself. Or let's say a 0.1 change in the log of x. That would be equivalent to a 10% change in the thing itself. Uh, so let's say that we are talking about earnings. If we go back to this example from the last video, uh, we saw that people who are married on average earn 0.212 more in log terms than people who are unmarried. This means that people who are married earn on average 21.273% more, so tw about a 21% increase uh, in actual earnings over people who are not married. Not a small difference, right? So we can just take this coefficient right there, move the decimal place over two points, uh, and that is the interpretation that we have here. Now this is, of course, if our dependent variable is log is logged, right? So here we have log earnings regressed on married, and so a one unit change in married leads to a 0.213 uh, unit change in log earnings. And a 0.213 change in log earnings is a 21% change in earnings itself. Whenever you're working with logarithms, you can memorize if you like the, what happens if you have a, a logged dependent variable, a logged independent variable. But I like to walk through this logic every single time. You start out with your regression equation. You have your, your dependent variable and your independent variable. The coefficient is the effect of a one unit change in this on this, okay? Now we can ask, what does it one unit change actually mean? Well, if this is a logged variable, if our independent variable is logged, then a one unit change over here means a 100% change. 
So the coefficient there must mean the effect of a 100% increase in our variable, right? Okay, well, what about if it's logged over here? So uh, let's say that we're talking about a, let's say the coefficient over here is 0.5. And we've decided that a one unit change in whatever this is, which might be a 100% change in the actual value, is a 0.5 change over here. Well, if this is just y by itself, then that's just a 0.5 increase in units of y. If this is log y, then a 0.5 increase means a 50% increase in y itself, because it's a 0.5 increase in log y, which means a 50% increase in y. We can write out all the different versions that we have uh, and memorize them, right? If it's y and log x, then uh, a coefficient is going to tell us that a 100% change in x is associated with a coefficient change in y. If it's log y on x, then a one unit change in y is a uh, coefficient times 100% change in x. If they're both logged, uh, then a 100% change in x is associated with a coefficient times 100% change in y or a 1% change in x is associated with a coefficient percent change in y. We can memorize all that stuff. Or you could just walk through the logic of what does a one unit increase mean for x? And then what does a coefficient unit uh, increase mean for y? Whether it's log x or x or log y or y. All right, that's the basics of functional form. We want to look at the scatter plot of our data to see what the shape is. If it's not a straight line, we probably don't want to try to fit a straight line to it. Common ways that we can fit non-straight lines are polynomials, which will let us fit any sort of curves. The curvier we want it to be, the more terms we can add, but we don't want to get too crazy there. Uh, and um, uh, so we can fit that polynomial terms. We can interpret the uh, effect of a one unit increase in x when we have polynomial terms by taking the derivative of our regression equation with respect to x. Uh, and then seeing what that is. The, value, the in effect, of course, will be different for different values of x. We can also fit non-curvy lines with logarithms, which are applied commonly to highly skewed data or growth-based relationships. Uh, when we have a log, we can interpret the one unit change in log of x as a 100% uh, change in x itself. And we can walk through that logic to interpret a regression that has logs on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, or perhaps both. All right, that's it. Thank you.